All right, so the three rules of muscles. You guys ready? If you remember these three rules, you can figure out anything. You can figure out what any muscle does, and all you need is a picture. If you can figure out these three rules, our functional anatomy class is over. That's it. And you can tell me the most complicated thing a muscle does. You just have to be able to visualize the muscle and take it through these three steps. Rule number one. Three of the muscles, right? Three rules of muscles. Muscles only contract and relax. They don't twist, they don't bend, they don't shape, they don't tone. They also don't burn the fat that's laying directly above them. <laughs> All they do is contract and relax. They're little machines that shorten. And then they relax, and they don't shorten anymore. That's it. You guys ready for rule number two? As you can tell, these are getting terribly complicated. <laughs> Muscles only work On joints they cross. Oh, now we're taking it up a notch. My deltoid crosses what joint? Shoulder. shoulder. So we'd expect it to move. My shoulder. That makes sense. Would you expect your deltoid to move your elbow? No, you'd have to have some pretty weird deltoids, right? They'd have to like attach over here. And that's all fine and good. And then we start talking about abs. Mm -hmm. Does your rectus abdominis cross your hip? Mm -hmm. Then why does everybody do this to work their abs? Mm -hmm. Ever thought about that? <laughs> that drives me nuts. I'm working my lower abs. Your lower abs don't cross your hips either. Not that they don't exist or anything, but they don't cross your hips either. Well, that still works my abs. Maybe it does. But is my abs the primary mover of my hip? And why did I start moving my hip to do that? What is the prime mover of my hip? Your psoas. Where's your psoas located? Your spine. It goes from spine to hip, which makes sense. It crosses my hip, so it would move it. You guys know where it's located in relation to here? Just underneath your lower abs. So people think they're feeling their abs, and they're just feeling their psoas getting jacked up. Great. Um, now, from a more technical perspective, so now I'm just busting this and fooling around, it's cool, but biceps, we all know the biceps cross what joint? Elbow, and everybody goes elbow, and good, they cross in front of the elbow, and which means if they cross in front of the elbow, they're probably going to pull my arm which way? This way, right? And this is called elbow flexion, but my biceps also cross my shoulder. Muscles will act on joints they cross. So if it crosses my shoulder, by connecting to my carotid process and my superglenoid tubercle, that's a, something in my glenoid fossa. Glenoid fossa, right? The shoulder uh, cup. So if it crosses in front of my shoulder this way, what do you think it's going to do to my arm? Yeah, it's going to go this way, which is called shoulder flexion. Yeah. Not too bad so far, right? You ready for the third and final rule? Yeah. Muscles work best in the direction of their fibers. So going over this, muscles work best in the direction of their fibers, we kind of mentioned it earlier already when we were talking about planes. We said muscles that are going to take us through the sagittal plane are probably going to be oriented how? Up and down, 
and the front and back of our body. Muscles that are going to move us in the transverse plane are probably going to be oriented how? Across. Parallel with the transverse plane. We could also go obliquely. Right? That might help us with rotation. It's kind of a mixture of across and up and down. Right? We do have muscles like that. That's okay. Frontal plane muscles, we said, are probably going to do what? Be oriented how? Up and down. Where on our body? On the sides. So let's take a let's take a muscle. Let's take a muscle that we all know, and take it through these three rules. The pecs. All right, we all know where our pecs Huge. are, right? Huge. Do a bench. All right. So we got the pectoralis major. I'm just going to go over it real quick. Origins and insertions. You guys ready? Sternum, clavicle, costal cartilage, and my first seven ribs. Right, so this area. Insertion. Lateral lip of my vestibular groove. Or medial lip of my greater tubercle. Not really want to say that. So it's over here. Now, my pec only contracts. We'll go with that. It crosses what joint? Shoulder. So it's going to move my shoulder. All right, so everything we're talking about is going to be joint actions of the shoulder. Good. That, that was a huge, huge step. That's all we had to do. All right, so now we have to think about the direction of these fibers and how it's going to pull this bone. If I start here, like this, and my chest shortens, where is it going to pull my arm? Is it going to pull it out that way? Maybe. Maybe it's kind of right on top. Might pull this way. Like just pull this way. Put your put one hand over your pec and then the other hand. Put it right, right on top of where you would imagine that bicipital group to be, and then shorten yourself. There you go. All right. So internal rotation. Has everybody got the three rules of muscles? So let's talk about some other stuff. If I put my arm like this, I might sand my pec. Now where is it going to pull my arm? This way. Okay. What is this? What is this joint action? Horizontal adduction. Those are the two biggies. Now we can get a little, we can get a little more crazy. Can I go back to what Juan was talking about before? My clavicular head. Right. This is my glenoid fossa. This is my humerus. Right. Some of the fibers in my clavicular head are very up and down oriented, like this. Right. So with my arm down on my side. What do you think my clavicular head could help with? It doesn't have a perfect angle for it, but it could help with a little bit. A little bit of shoulder flexion. Cool. Yeah. So we can say clavicular head helps with shoulder flexion. Sternal fibers the sternum, come off like this. I'm kind of pulling at a 
downward angle there. What do you think they're going to be able to help with? <laughs> it's my favorite example of that joint action ever. Right? How did Hulk Hogan show cable off Cable crossovers. Pecs? You could do cable crossovers, or we could just go with the silliest example ever, which is the how did... Hogan. Yeah, the Hulk Hogan. How did he show off his pecs? You can't, you can't go, well, I do horizontal adduction, because then your hands are in the way. Yeah. you got to think about this. Right? He did, he showed off his pecs out. <laughs> this way, right? So you could see his pecs and his arms were in the way. Of course, he had much bigger arms to get in the way than I do, but you know, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, there's a little bit of adduction that your pecs can do. So we could say that the sternal head... Assists would probably be a better word with adduction. We didn't need a kinesiology book. We didn't need a bunch of crazy research studies. We didn't need an anatomy and physiology text. We can just figure this all out. A lot of people come up to me and they go, you memorize all of that stuff. I don't. Really, I don't. Like, if you get this concept, it doesn't matter what the muscle is. You just kind of have to be able to s determine what the joint is, kind of know how that joint moves. Today we're going to be dealing with a lot of ball and socket and hinge joints, you know, like the big joints that we deal with as trainers. Right? But as long as you kind of know how the joint moves and you kind of just visualize how that muscle pulls, all I have to be able to do is name that joint action. And I know everything that this muscle does. You guys with me? And I can be as creative as I want to be. I can put the head in any position I want to, or the shoulder in any position I want to, or the hip or the knee in any position I want to, and it doesn't matter as long as I can visualize it and go, okay, crosses that joint, this is how it crosses with it. Shortens, it's gonna pull the bone in X direction. All right, I got a good picture of what that looks like. What joint action is that? You guys cool with that? Mm -hmm.